and we're live the she's the they's and the gays hello everybody and welcome in to tonight's episode of time and time again i'm one of your gms anita and over here is our other gm anita i'm kidding i'm darby hello uh and uh we've got an amazing cast why doesn't everybody just tell us who they are who they're playing and uh, we will uh, continue our story from there. We'll start. We'll start with D. Oh, well, hello, my lovely children of the dark. My name is D, and tonight I will be playing Donnie Powers, the adept. Incredible. And next up, we got Nikki. Hello, I am Nikki, and tonight I am playing Gidget Kelly, an office manager. And after that, we've got. Uh, Chase. Oh, ooh, fun. I get to go third. Hi, everybody. My name is Chase, Chase, Chase Beck, uh, and I play Paxton, a very nervous man, um, much like myself. <laughs> and up next, last but not least, we've got, uh, we've got May. Hi, I'm May. I will be playing your wonderful warrior, Finley. Awesome. And... Darby, do you want to do our our quick recap of what to uh, take uh, then take us in? Yeah, sure. Last time on Glee. Um... <laughs> <laughs> That's what you missed on Glee. Glee. So, last time, you were all being chased by these figures and then found yourself all pulled into the halls of the Wandering Eye. You met Iris and Lens, these enigmatic leaders for uh, the enigmatic leaders of the, this organization who answer some of your questions and then politely but firmly tell you that the there are two options for you to join the wandering eye or to join the wandering eye later uh, and let you wander loose in the halls. You all make various encounters. Uh, Gidget finding these globes of the worlds and then seeing a familiar face. Uh, Donnie having a good heart to heart with Emily and then learning about Emily's history. Uh, Paxton yet again being rejected by Isaac, <laughs> giving yep. him barely the time of the day. Uh, and then Finley, sweet, sweet Finley, who finds the professor who having the absolute time of his life and showing you a book and be like books look at these books uh and brings you to a place deep deep into the bottoms of the of the halls to the scorched circle of magic where your sword was glowing the same and humming at the same frequency as this circle and you finley following a destiny given to you by a malevolent being, free them and let Drexos walk free. Allegedly. 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 Mm -hmm. Allegedly. 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 To the horror of Iris and Lens, who are standing right beside you. But, pish posh, end of the worlds happen all the time. What's more important, get it. Yes. You're sitting across from somebody who's very, very familiar to you, is very similar pictures to you, and you just put together who this person might be. I thought I walked away from him at the end of last episode. Did you walk away from him? Uh, I think so I might have. It ended, actually, because I rewatched the VOD, uh, it Good. ended with the two of you talk. You were still sort of in a conversation. And you realize, and that's that when you dropped him, the info. Parts of him look familiar, and you didn't quite walk away at the end. Okay. So we'll rewind just a touch to you in this conversation. Right. So that would make you my father then. Uh, and Reese just sort of nods. And. Well, you weren't supposed to know me or my mom. Well, I mean, where I come from is not where your mom comes from. So 
we really shouldn't have ever met each other in the first place. I mean, my mom is from a place that most people aren't from either. It's not like she's up here being a human and all of those things. Well, yes, of course, but... Wait, does that mean I'm an alien? No, I, I mean, I'm... I'm... I'm a, I'm a human person. Right. And your so it's my, your my mom that's from the different place. Well, I mean, your mom's a Selkie, right? Right. As am I. So you're half Selkie, I suppose, after a fashion. I would say I'm all Selkie, if, I, if you're asking me. The magic's all there, yeah? The magic is all there. I don't yeah. really believe in being half really, things. Does it really matter? It would matter to me if you were an alien. Um, you said you weren't from here. Where are you from? Well, um, I'm. That's a bit of a complica complex question. Uh, Should I have said when are you from? Oh, well, no. I'd be about the same time period, roughly. Huh. But uh, right. where I'm from is a little bit of a uh, a different world. Well, you're human. Uh, yeah. Is this like alternate universes or something? Alternate planets. Two, Interesting. They existed side by side for a while. But then uh, some, some, and you sort of see that there's a, a blonde uh, femme sort of peeking around a corner makes eye contact. Um, sort of Please. walks over, taps him on the shoulder. Can I borrow you for a sec? Uh, uh, uh all right, sure. And st stands. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. But I think you've well, also got somewhere you need to be and sort of looks over at Donnie. Right. Um, well, I think we're going to be here a while if you want to, um, find me. I guess if you think hard enough, you'll find me. Something like that. Yep, the halls take you where you need to be. Right then. It was nice to see you again. Meet you, I nice. suppose. Nice to, nice to meet you as well. Gidget. Right. Reese. She gave you a cute name. She did. And, and uh, she'll turn and walk to Donnie. And he'll turn and walk with the... And, uh, sort of... Oh, what's going on? She's gone below. And they'll walk. Donnie? Yes, love? That's my dad. Oh. Well, I'm sorry I'm wearing such a cheap suit. I'm not sure he would be looking at your suit exactly. He's got something happening. Something somebody's gone below. A bit oh. distracted. I'm pretty sure he's not supposed to talk to me. Or at least before we came here, he wasn't supposed to. It's weird. And uh, to, to say the least, I mean, w w what did he say? That he wasn't supposed to know me and my mother after a time. I think maybe he was recruited for this group and that he's from another planet, but he's still a human. He also mentioned that I'm a health silky, but as far as I'm concerned, I'm all silky. How can you be from another planet and a human? So what I'm, he said they were side by side. I'm wondering if not only could these people travel through time, but also through space. It, oh shit, like a comic book. You remember there was that room that you were in where you saw the three distinct globes. 
and how when you looked at both of them from the right angle, they made the same existing map. There is this, this art that I saw. I thought it was just some weird trippy art installation, but it's more like if you looked at it at the right angle, there were um, multiple worlds that looked like they were from the same world. Kind of like an eclipse, but with multiple planets, if that makes sense. That that sounds sort of similar to the clock face that we saw. All four sides of it represented a different flow of time, either forwards, backwards, hastened or slowed. I doubt they're unrelated, but I don't know well, how they're related. I did ask him if he was from a different time, and he said that we were from relatively the same time, so it wasn't that. Because I asked, where are you from? And then he said, that was complicated. And I said, when are you from? And he said, well, we're actually from the same time. So I'm not sure. So he was just unhelpful in general. Oh, I mean, yeah, I would say so. But I think it, it sounds like it wasn't really a choice of his to be unhelp unhelpful. I think he's just maybe a bit shocked that I'm here. And this is all a bit over my head, to be honest with you. My degree is in sociology, not time science. I was about to ask, I, I mean, how do you feel just speaking to your father? You've never done it before, right? It's a bit weird. I think I'd be a little bit more worried if um, Ma didn't have such a nice husband growing up. My stepdad, he was pretty cool. So it's fine, but I think if I had that hole in my heart somewhere that maybe I would be a bit upset or angry at him, but I like Stuart. He was a nice man. He also, the, the picture you have of him on your desk is a very good tie. I've actually bought it for myself. Yeah, Stuart does enjoy his good ties, but um. It's, a, it's just weird. Like, I don't feel any sort of anger or sadness about it. It's just weird to meet somebody who's supposed to be related. I suppose he said he saw me a few times over the years, but he would have looked different. Probably that uncanny way that all of the people look the same. So he Probably. came to me as a neighbor. Well, that is a lot to process. Um, I hope it can be cured over a nice slice of cheesecake. You know, I do love a cheesecake. Wonderful. Um, and I will hand you a fork. There's only one slice of cheesecake. Um, but we each have our own set. Right. Well, thank you for picking up a cheesecake. How was your day? Have you had any interesting conversations yourself? And she oh, takes a bite. Well, I'm pretty boring. I just spoke to the spirit of um, the person who lives in my ring, which was illuminating in several different ways. She's apparently tied up in all of this to some degree, but she doesn't particularly trust the the iris. She's a bit it's 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 odd. It's almost like she does trust them, but she's also in fear of them. And it's a combination that makes me dislike them more, but I can't prove that they've done anything concretely wrong, I suppose this is a bit of a complicated position to be in. I think sometimes people can be predictable, which is why you can trust them. They're honest and predictable, but they can be a bit scary anyway. I could mm. see how she could fear them, but trust them. Makes sense. Makes They're sense. also a bit creepy. <laughs> so just, just a bit, just a bit. By a bit, I do mean very. Um, but they don't, 
in in a similar fashion, I don't exactly mistrust them either. So I don't um, think they'd lie to us. That's where I'm settled is they seem quite honest and they made it very clear what our options were. I feel like if they were on dishonest or untrustworthy, they would find a way to trick us into agreeing to do all of this. Instead, they told us point blank what our options were. That is true. That's a very good point. So how did she get into your ring? And she takes another bite of the cheesecake. Um, well, it, it wasn't my ring at the time. Uh, this ring was actually a, a gift from uh, from my uh, grandmother, who is no longer with us. Um, oh, I, I'm sorry for your loss. It was a long time ago. Um, but she, when going through her will, she had left me this ring. I knew it was a magical focus, and I've just kind of... I wasn't really interested until I was at a particular low point, and that's when I finally went through things, and she guided me to, um, you know, be better. So I owe her plenty and I'll sort of fidget with the, the ring. What is it exactly that you can do for her? Um, well, you know how the saying goes. Ask not what I can do for the ring and more what I can do for you. You I, just I'm said kidding. you owe her everything. I'm just curious if there was something she actually wanted. She She's never asked for anything in repayment. She seems to just be one of those fabled good people that I keep hearing about in Legends. Right. Well... I heard if you think real hard about something that you need, you'll find it. Perhaps we can find a nice garden to go for a walk in. Hmm. You know, I did have the botanical gardens on my supposed um, lunch date ideas for you. So that's I, I'm going to take that as a point in my favor that I called that one correctly. And <laughs> also, um, as soon as we're done with this cheesecake, if you join me, that is. That was the end of the sentence. Yes. If and she takes me. a big bite of the, like, double bite of the cheesecake and it's gone. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, up in multiple ways. All right. The two of you begin to set out and walk towards... What you believe could be botanical gardens. Donnie, as you're fidgeting with the ring that's on your finger, as you move it around, there's a click. As, thank you for that lore drop, Noir, the ring itself pops open and a small piece of paper falls out. Gidget looks I, at Donnie and waits for him to pick it up. Yes, I, I pick up the paper and I stop <laughs> fidgeting with the ring because I don't want to knock anything else out of there if that was not on purpose. It almost looks no. like there was a small compartment that you never noticed in that inset gem just popped open. Uh, I'll un unfurl it and read. I would assume there are words on it. It is actually a charcoal drawing. Hmm. And it is a sketch of a woman that 
vaguely resembles the parchment paper visage, the ever-changing, ever-shifting paper visage of Amelie that you saw. But this is whole. Complete. Like someone sketched her in profile from a few different angles. At the bottom, there is a uh, there is a artist's signature. Isaac. Oh, mate, I'm going to have to give you your ring back. You found it. Uh, I will show the the piece of paper to um to Gidget and say, did forget to mention she also apparently has a, a, a betrothed somewhere in these holes. Um, and I'll show her the picture and point to the name Isaac. Is this her, the girl in your ring? Yeah, more, more or less. Hmm. You found it. She's pretty. Huh. I've seen better recently. Gidget just like rolls her eyes and then smiles. But, um, the gorgeous women I keep around me aside, um, I think, I mean, this ring has been very helpful and it's helped me stop running through suits because I don't have to rip them up for my own spell components, but I have to give the ring back to this Isaac person if I find him, right? What if that's our first date? I feel like that's a memorable one, don't you think? What if instead of finding a private garden, we found this Isaac? Hmm. I do strive to make first dates memorable. It'd be an interesting story to tell. For years to come, if you're lucky. Hopefully for multiple reasons. Very well. You lead the way. I prefer to be behind you. Of course. Uh, and she'll, uh, clo- she'll like think real hard about this Isaac person. I will, I will do the same since I have a slightly better idea who he is. <laughs> I think you, you'll wander the halls, um, you know, your feet kind of almost leading you which way that this way and that way. Uh, until you come across a hall lined with mirrors encircling a statue with a very balding Paxton, perhaps. <laughs> Heaving in a corner. <laughs> Wrong with him. I mean, he seems to be a nervous wreck most of the time. That's true. Um, Pax, buddy? Huh? Yeah, hi. Oh, okay. Oh, finally. Oh, cool. You. Hi. Ah. Uh, Hello. Uh, so, bumped into Isaac again. That, that guy. So, he's a... Fun to talk about. Gave me a two-minute thing. Give me a two-minute... Two-minute quiz to ask about anything that I wanted to know when... I don't know anything, so that's my dilemma. How are you? Uh, which way did he go? That way. I tried to follow him, but some sort of magical mirror force, whatever, just kept whoosh, putting me back here. So, Paxton's pointing at a mirror. Donnie, does Donnie know what Isaac looks like? Like, have you guys met? I, I don't believe I've had any physical interaction with him at all, no. Have not. Okay. You do have a statue in front of you true of isaac oh well that should make it easier to find him if this is what he looks like uh, it yes is a tall, but... uh sorry i was just gonna say that it's uh. a tall statue uh and it is of a man uh dressed in uh armor at, with kind of furs that look different from any animal you've ever seen and uh, there is a inscription at the bottom of the statue uh, that says, Isaac, not a second to spare. 
Interesting. Hmm. On theme, at the very right. least. Can I inspect the mirror? Yeah. yeah. Touch the mirror. I it is. Touch the sides. It is a mirror. Uh, is there a back? I, tr I try to. Is there? Is it on a wall or? This all these mirrors are flush on a wall, and the walls kind of. It's sort of. You're in like a circular. Yeah, you're in a circular space. The mirrors are like fully lining this room. Got it. Um, I'm going to like do the trick of like seeing if it's two way glass. Like put your finger. See if they touch or not. It's a normal mirror. I forget. Oh. I Darby. Forget. I don't remember the rule anymore either. I think if it's finger touchy, it's a if they two touch each glass. other, then it's one way glass. If they are uh, separated, then it's uh, it, then it's a regular mirror. Because that's why there's two panes of. Uh -huh. mirror. Mm. All right. The, um, the better way to do it is to put your flashlight up against it. Mm -hmm. Smart. <laughs> um, okay. I knock on the mirror. Knock. Yeah. Notice that the you in the mirror looks a little different. Do I look any different in the mirror than I normally look to myself? Mm -hmm. Your cardigan is a slightly it's... different color. Mm -hmm. My what? Cardigan's a slightly different color. Okay, I'm going to step to one next to it. You're not wearing a cardigan at all? And I keep doing that until it looks, unless it looks like I'm getting naked, in which case I stop. <laughs> it does not look like you're getting naked, but there's a version, you step to the side, there's a version of you uh, that looks much more like your mother does. It's a step to the side, there's a version of you, uh, no cardigan, uh, more of a austere sort of dress than you normally wear. Step another. You're, you have a sword at your side. More of a fighter get up. My buffer as well. Mm hmm Nice. You are ripped. I think I might life. have to ask Finley for some advice on how to work out. This is quite a look. Oh, cool. It's not just me that, me that has it happen to you. Okay, cool. That's sweet. I mean, I this is a great way to learn what look to do next if I wanted to change my hair, but um, there must be some kind of clue. Donny, I want to see what you look like in different mirrors here. Oh, you don't have to ask me more than once. I'd love to see more outfits. Um, and I will, I'll immediately step in front of uh, the mirrors. It's a version of Donny with a green suit, with question marks all over it. Hmm. Hmm. Bit garish. And I'll step to the next one. Uh, a version where it's like a purpley sort of fey creature. Almost looking version of Donnie. This could be fun for Halloween. I guess. Mm. Not bad. Do I see the ring in the mirror? No. In none of the permutations do you see the ring. Only the one that's on your finger. Guess I'm the special one, lads. It's a version of you wearing a mask with a wide smile. Hmm. Interesting. Um, hmm. Well, we're looking for Isaac and he's not here. Um, so like, Paxton, are you good? I'm that's a good question. I've been asking myself that for quite some time, and I mean, I'm doing fine, you know, it's not like we're still having to deal with, you know, what I. The more I talk about it, the more I'm just going to unnerve myself. And I think it'd be best for me, and maybe everyone, if I just sort of shut up and keep my thoughts to myself. Not trying to be self-deprecating, it's just that, like, I don't know what I'm doing right now. 
And now I have a large man that just said to me that I'm not ready. And I feel personally offended by that. So it's just, I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, Fenley has a big sword. You're, he just sort of gestures, gestures over, over to Donnie, just sort of like, you've got everything in the looks department and the charisma department. And you, and it looks over again, just like, well, you've got a better head on your shoulders than me. And I'm just this nervous college student oh over my head oh. i mean just a few years ago i myself was a nervous college student we can't always just start off as i am as, as i am now good point and i mean you're not ready so is anyone ever ready when the next big thing in your life happens you just have to adapt and considering the professor you TA for, I would assume you're quite good at adaptation. Yeah, it's just... It's more than just that. He's he's also a family friend as well, and it's just... That's just... But that's just another story, and I... I the don't professor think... or Isaac? The professor. I see. And that's just another story for another day. I'll definitely talk more about it once we get the hell out of here and figure out how to save the space-time continuum and all that jazz. Speaking of saving the space-time continuum, Finley. Mm-hmm. Yes. You just let a scary red devil man with horns out of his nice little orb. Uh, he could be a good guy. Allegedly. Allegedly? Like, I didn't, you know, it's one of those where I feel like I don't know this guy, and he could be the hero that saves all of mankind. Definitely. He did thank you. For and sure. He, he did thank me. He was he was polite. Manners go a long way. Mm -hmm. um, this is the sword's fault, really. What sword? Is that going to work? Is that excuse going to work? I think I think Finley literally says that out loud of, this is the sword's fault. Is that excuse going to work? Um, and then, real, like, he's like, I don't know. I'm gonna... Finley. Yeah. You're not holding a sword. What? What am I holding? Nothing. What did you Something do? Something in your hand. You turn and you see I... the two figures. I was Our rescuing signs. someone who I thought needed rescuing. Because the sword is of destiny. How did we let this in? You saw me with the sword. You never had a sword. What? I mean, I had a... No. I had something. You set Drexos free from the space between spaces. Yeah. You've damned us all. Well, I don't, not on purpose. It was the, um, I had a, there was a, there was, um, a, uh, uh, professor. You saw it. I, how did I do it? It was a. You see the professor, he's just like. I shouldn't be here. No, you're complicit in this. You stay. Um, I need a lawyer. Uh, um, <laughs> thank you, D. Um, yeah, I think I think because you know, so she doesn't remember if, if she doesn't have the sword, and she um, you remember having this. Finley remembers having the sword. 
Okay, if only remembers having the sword. And the professor kind of chimes in at this point. A big sword? Two-handed? Big as anything? Um, yeah. Claymore? It was huge. I found it, it in the water it, in a it rock. It glowed? Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. Was referred to as the Sword of Destiny, which is a bit ostentatious, but, you know, is what it is. Y'all saw it, right? They both look at each other and then look at you. Like, it literally led me here. Iris steps and puts a hand on the professor's shoulder. It says, we need to get you out of here. And the two of them vanish. You're left with lens. Whoa. Okay. You're the nice one, right? I think perhaps you need to be coming with me. I didn't, I didn't. Mm. Well, for, takes where, a step towards you. Okay, she takes a step back, but where are we going? Where are we going? That's important to know. Lens takes I'm, I'm step. more than happy to go with you. If I can have some information first. I didn't do anything wrong on purpose. And so, like, I'm really just a helpful young lady. A path to hell, good intentions, that sort of thing. Mm. On purpose or not, you broke the tower. You now free Drexos. Who is Traxos? You keep saying that name. I don't know who that is. Oh, yes, because freeing a somebody who was asking for help because they were trapped in a magic orb that was stuck in the bottom of a cert within a circle seems like a very, very good idea, doesn't it, Finley? Okay. Okay, first of all, I just want to say I didn't realize we were in the bottom of a thing. I don't really know where I am in space. And is weird here. So how am I supposed to know we're in a basement? This looks like a weird library. Hmm. Who puts their prison cell in a library? Hmm. Okay, that's what I thought. Who just Stay. sticks their sword into something? Or because a it sword. It glow. It don't say so. it was real. People Allegedly, saw me with it. it was cool too. It, I looked really badass when I held it. it was, Awesome. Anyways, takes another step. No, it's backing up. Okay. And so, you know, why would you put your prison cell in an orb in a library for a bad guy, the devil, whatever he was? Um, maybe, maybe he's not the bad guy. Maybe you're the bad guy. And I'm confused. So what, where are we going? Why are we going? Somewhere. I didn't want to be here. I wanted to find my friend, and I freaking found the library. We're going to go somewhere where you can do some things on purpose, where it won't mess up all of the work that me and my oak have put in. Okay, but can you tell me who this guy is? I just want some context, please. Please, please, please. Takes another step. Okay, another backup. Come on! You uh... feel hands grab around your back and you mm. are pulled backwards. Oh, not a hug I want. And you hear uh, you hear Lens go, no, 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 no! And try to grab you. But you're gone. Maybe it is a hug I want? <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Did it feel nice? It feels familiar. Oh. In, like, a good way? In, like, in a guy I just let out of prison way? Or in a, like, you, like, like your, an your old mom. friend reuniting oh. with you for the first time in many, many, many years. I like that. Good hug, then. I think the last thing she shouts, like, first thing she shouts is bad hug, and then it turns into, oh, no, good hug. Um, You're standing at a set of tall double doors. And uh, this person sort of grabs you by the shoulders and turns you around and holds you by the arms. Uh, a shorter, blonde, femme uh, presenting person. Mm. Um, sure. Uh, big, bright blue eyes. Hey. Um, Hi. Thank you. I think. It's really good to see you. Uh, okay. So here's the deal. Um. 
pulled you out of there. They're going to find you eventually. But it, it's probably best that you get in points into this room with tall bookshelves, very similar to the library that uh, you found the professor in, but a little different. Okay. One if second, I, I have some questions. Uh, oh, oh, no, go I, ahead. I, no, you first. I'm okay. sorry. I'm just saying that, that they're safe, but you got to wait for your friends. Um, uh, Reese is, is going to grab them um, and bring them here. Uh, but it, it, you don't have much much time until you close the doors. Then you have all the time. Sorry, it's, it's close, confusing. Close Anyways, you had questions. Okay. One, last time I was in a library, it was bad. Am I going to do something bad in this library? Hopefully not. Okay. I'll take it. Uh, two, who are you? Oh, um, Finbin. It's me. Colette? Yeah. <gasps> okay. I think it, then it turns into like big hug. Like, ah! first it's like, like hesitate to be like, wait, is it, is no, it like, uh, can I, we I love hugs. Okay. I love yeah, hugs. Hugs. Um, it, 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 she's shorter, like much shorter than you. Probably <laughs> about five foot nothing. And like just oh yeah, just this like is a lift package. off the ground hug. Oh yeah, and like you are you are a tall, uh, and you just sort of lift, uh, and she's like, ah, my feet dangle. I like this. This is good. <laughs> this is good hugs. Okay, this is so good. Oh, I'm so oh, glad you're uh, alive and okay. I have your necklace. Do you want that back? No, it, it, it's yours. It's always been yours. Oh, uh, oh, uh, look inside. Uh, okay, she opens it and like because she put it on and sort of looks at it. Uh, there inside it's a picture of the two of you and it says Finn, Ben, and Collie. Okay. Thank you. It, uh, this is I feel feelings. Um it, it's it's okay. And uh, listen, I would love to talk with you more, but right now super uh -huh. dangerous and uh my bosses are going to be real real mad at me. Oh, yeah, um Cornea and um, the other one? Iris and Lens. Sure. Yeah, Lens was the one who was like creepy walking at me. Yeah. Yeah. Who's Draxos? Drax Dra Drano? Draxos? Draxos. Um, real bad. Uh -huh. uh, almost destroyed everything. Ripped space and time asunder to try and reshape the world in his own image. Didn't work out. Got trapped in another dimension until you freed him. Think he's upset about that? Uh, real upset that he was trapped in another dimension. Not super upset that you freed him, though. Very happy about that. Yeah, seemed pretty pleased. Um, okay, well. <laughs> okay gonna work on that um okay where'd my sword go oh sorry yes i have doors to close and friends to find yes uh friends will be on the way once they're here okay. close the doors oh once they're here close the doors okay very okay important. i can do that are you gonna but, be okay do you want to I, I mean you could like come with oh me no i'm gonna be fine i gotta make sure that people don't find you so what i'm gonna want you to do is until your friends get here to sort of hide behind the the just sort of stay out of sight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, I, she pulls this yeah. mask up uh, from that's like sort of attached to a hip, places mm -hmm. it over her face. Oh. The visage shimmers, gets taller, and turns into you. Oh, oh, I, I I'll I'll draw I them away. Be... Just okay. Stay yeah. out of sight till your friends get here. They'll be here. Between like ten seconds and like five hours from now, and runs. Ha, oh, Stay out of sight. Okay. I can. I can do. Okay, staying out of sight. I'm gonna run in here. Close the door. And she goes into the thing, like chanting the that mantra of like, "Run to here. Close the door." You know, like you know. Yeah. <laughs> and then just like, God, it was so good to see her again. Wow, like you know, her hair looks so pretty and it so, looks so soft and smells so nice. And like, just kind of, you know, those little things. And then once again, like, no, 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 focus. You let out the ultimate evil. <gasps> Gotta fix that. While uh, hiding. All right. The camera shifts to our group in the mirrored 
Paul. So, I don't think we can find Isaac, which I'm sorry, Donnie, that would have made quite the first date, but I think being here in general is going to be an interesting, memorable story to tell. Yes, I think again. I think the founding of chronology and applied science is a uh, pretty pretty solid. I think that counts. But there is someone that I would be interested in finding, and that's Finley. Right. I um, don't think we could should have left her alone in a place like this. There are lots of buttons to push, and I'm speaking from experience, so hopefully she hasn't torn down a tower? Or talked herself into a mess of some sort. Or lose that sort of destiny thing. Right. Around the corner. Here. Get it! Trees. Oh. Uh, uh, hello again, Reese. Hello. Um, do you want to do it? I, I, I hear that maybe your friend got separated from you all. Do you want to? Wanna... Was she the one who went below? It wasn't a good thing, was it? It wasn't ideal, but, but... If you want to follow me, uh, I can, you can, everything is, don't have a lot of time, but you will have a lot of time. If you just come with me real quick, real quick. Then All let's right. make haste. And uh, she's going to take her heels back off, put her flats back on. <laughs> I like the quick Donnie change will carry the heels. Mm -hmm. um, and Reese will lead you down the halls, ducking sort of left, right, kind of quickly leading you all to space in front of these huge double doors. Get your box right in. And she's Finley. Are you here? Uh, who, who is it? <laughs> it's Gadget, you silly girl. Oh, yeah. Come in. Come in and then shut the doors. <laughs> All right. Uh, can Reese... Donnie and Paxton come as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. The whole crew. Uh, Reese sort of. All right. Um, you cl uh, close the doors and um, you won't be. You, you'll have some time to try and figure things out and figure out how to fix things. Do you have a new sword I could have? You lost your sword? You lost the sword. I didn't. Lost is... Uh, here's the deal. You didn't quite ever have a sword. What? Mm. Huh? It... Oh, it was his, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Wait. You it know is? what? People really should be keeping better track of their magic items, and maybe they should be telling people what they're for, so that things I... like this don't happen. And not I don't know who he is, but water. I can tell by Finley's face that something has gone wrong here. I'm sorry. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back, back, backtrack. Who's his? Well, let me explain. Um, I let... So, I had uh, the glowy sword. But... Great. Explain, mm -hmm. but... Uh, and Reese is going to grab the doors. Close yeah, yeah, them. shut the doors. Uh, yeah. And he stays on the other side of the doors. Oh, there should is. he be in here? I thought this was be safer. That's my dad. And... Oh, he works for the company apparently. So, so does my childhood fr friend. I'm starting to think that the people who come in, come in and out of our lives, were planted there, which makes me even more annoyed that they're upset with us for causing some kind of problem when it seems to be it was our destiny all along. Yeah, I um, well, so. 
I let out the ultimate evil. I'm sorry, like, it did watch space. now. Yeah, so... Yeah, I'm just going to rip huh? this band-aid off. What so, do you mean, ultimate evil? Do guy. you all hear that ticking? Yes. It's ominous enough to notice, yes. It's yeah. very unsettling. I don't know what's stressing me out. The fact that you said that and that, that sort of happened, or the fact that you let out an ultimate evil. What do you mean, ultimate evil? I well, I'm calling him ultimate evil. I think it's safe to assume he's not great. Um, so the glowy sword that I had was technically his, and it glowed when I got near him, and then I let him out of his weird time prison. It was in a library, which like not a great place for a time Why prison. Why would you put a time prison in a library? Very- How would you give a girl a sword and then not tell her what it is? Oh, so that's. I mean, what did I was they not see say. it when we came in? I don't if you think didn't- they did. If That's you didn't technically thing. lose the sword, then I don't owe Paxton $20 for guessing correctly. So I think it because it was never mine to begin with. So when I freed Draxos, that's his name, from uh-huh. the time prison, mm-hmm. I used the sword to do it and then it was gone. And then that is when um, um, glasses in, and... Um, Cornea showed up. Uh, Iris and Lens. Yeah. yeah, they showed up. And hey, DMs. they got mad. Hey, DMs. Yeah. I have a knowledge in history. Can I roll to see if, if uh, Paxton knows anything about a Draxos? Uh, absolutely. Uh, you definitely can, as you have knowledge in history. I'm going to say that this is going to be a really difficult roll, though. Uh, oh, baby. I love I'm, me a challenge. I'm saying that this is heroic. Which is a 24 or higher. (laughs) But because you have a knowledge in history, that does knock it down to formidable, which is a 21 or higher. And you can spend points if you'd like to try and reduce it. Oh, gosh. Do I even have points? Or if you have an edge, you can use it. I only have an edge in might. Wait, hold on. Yeah, I only have an edge in might. Oh, Oh, boy. Oh, all right. So if you spend so that's three, a, what'd you get? So that's a so that's a three. All right. Mm-hmm. He just sort of he just sort of like raises a finger, just sort of like. <gasps> you are in a room surrounded by books, and as you're sort oh. of thinking this, you look up above. Uh, the halls of this library you look at the doors that have been closed behind you and you see an inscription the halls take you where you need to be the books show you what you need to see just gonna grab a book and just slowly place it there and just what do we got just grab any random book? Any random book, because it's just like, if we're following that logic and following just sort of like, I'm already deep in Wonderland, I might as well just be just become Alice and just start navigating my way through it. Oh, my. Well. I opened the book. Anywhere in particular? I just skim through a page just to see if, if, if anything is going to happen. If Are you that thinking scripture is right. of Drexos? Yes. All right. You start reading this passage. You're reading the words Drexos. Drexos the strong, Drexos the powerful, general. And as you're reading, suddenly you're standing on the edges of a beach. Huh? Waves are crashing. You look around and you see encampments, glowing lights. You see a person dressed in armaments, shining metal with engravings and designs that you've never seen before. 
that is turned to you as he's speaking to you, standing from the table, speaking to some other people. Now, once we begin the invasion, we'll take these locations here. From there, we can cut off and rout the enemy. And since they will not be expecting us, we will be able to take the advantage before they can even rally their troops. He sir, continues to talk about that one. Mm -hmm. Our scouts, we've sent them across, but none have ever come back. How, how do we invade some place where we're not even sure if we're going to return? You keep saying Valid. there's land beyond the ocean, but our people just keep disappearing. Have I ever led you astray? We're on the brink of victory. Trust in me. You sent our two best. And our two best gave what they did. They're just waiting for us beyond the veil. Surely we would have heard something from Amelie and Isaac by now. Are you doubting me? Sir, I don't think you're fit to lead. And this person stands. Now, that's an interesting sword. Smiles. And you see this man, horns done up, the flash wielding in one hand a very familiar looking sword, cleaves this man in two. Anybody else have a problem with my decision making? Good. And he flicks the sword back. But what hits your face, blink, rub your eyes, and you are back in the library. Well, that was an interesting history lesson, he says, just sort of like closing the book and just... Paxton, there's blood on your face. Did he physically disappear or oh like did we see him go somewhere Paxton. or was he in front of us the whole time as far as you could see paxton just opened a book read a page and pulled the head back and there was there's some some red on his face What happened? I think I learned a little bit more about this guy in a much more com phys physically uncomfortable way than I could. So he's a general god man looking for something that a place that doesn't probably exist that he sent people to death with. And oh, yeah, also uh, that sword that you were carrying all this time, buddy. Um. Cleave the per cleave the guy in two with it. That makes so, sense. It was like super sharp. So yeah. <laughs> so, and I just sort of look at the book again. Just sort of like, is it just blank or is it just like since Draxos was his name? Draxos, yes. Yeah, so it said Draxos is still on the mind. Like, is it still just showing Draxos or is it just like, is it just blank? The paragraph shows, uh, it, if you're looking at it, it says Drexus. Drexus the strong, Drexus the general. 
the meeting with his lieutenants. Drexos one the camp. Drexos the ruthless cuts down a opposition of the sword of destiny. Okay. All right. All right. That. that, 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 that. Words, he just like just ment mentally in his mind, just like words are hard to describe this. So he just sort of like absent handedly, just sort of like, are there any tables that he could just sort of like set something down? Yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you need like a hug? I, I'm, it's that's a library. There are seating areas, places to read. So he's just gonna, so he's just gonna put that book down and then just sort of like I, any other random book and just sort of like okay, all right. If it's trying to give me what I want and the answers are here, then let's, and if everything here is just sort of like giving me, it, it doesn't matter, right? Like, <laughs> maybe, we already... may, may, maybe we, we don't ask the books. No, no, because... no, 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 it, the, the, the thing up there says that just sort of like, if, if, if everything that we need is right here in order for us to, to fix this, this crap, then maybe just like, you know, it, there's gotta be an answer here. Just, so maybe just, and he just like grabs another book, just like this one, this and the last one did make you bleed, but yeah, go off if you want. I am. Um, Finley, you notice that the blood is back. not Paxton's. Like, there's no cuts on Paxton. What? Where did the blood come from? How far were you standing from the victim of being cut in half? It was pretty close, right? That was right. I was right next to You're him. You're pretty close. Enough that okay. when Drexus put the sword back, just a bit flicked onto your face. Again, I was next to a man, and then next thing you know, half a man. <laughs> half. That's, that's quite gross, actually. It's very. I don't think that image is going to leave my mind, and I've been through a lot more worse than that. But um, that's again another story for another time. Man, Paxton, <laughs> make me an intellect test very quickly. Okay, uh, it's not sure. a hard one. Uh, this one is only going to be a, it's just going to be a standard difficulty, so a six or higher will do. Okay. Oh, a seven. Whew. Okay. Easily not. Um, Finley had the sword. Mm -hmm. Beautiful sword. But mm -hmm. always had like a really crappy looking scabbard. Because Finley just pulled the sword straight itself straight from the lake. When you saw you saw Drexos from sort of like from a uh, behind angle, mm -hmm. and you notice that when he took the sword and placed it in the scabbard, it was a beautiful, beautiful scabbard with intricate runic scrolling that looked almost very similar in a lot of ways to. Some of the diagrams that you've seen in books that the professor teaches. Finley. Yeah, what's up? He took the sword, but he took, but did he take the scabbard that you had on you? No, and she she fully turns around and shows you that it's just like, like a crappy leather one. I'm just gonna just like take a look, see at that, just like and just like let me let me can I just. Can I just, yeah, just for yeah, a minute? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Just like gently takes that and just like tries mm -hmm. to look at the inscriptions that are on there. There's no inscriptions. It is a crappy leather scabbard. Okay. All right. Cool. 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 Still has a price sticker on it. Clearance. Sword of Destiny. It was called, right? No other name. Name that you that it was had on it. Yeah. Yeah. No. Found it once again. I was swimming. Pulled it out of a rock. Thought, wow, that's neat. And then so... kept it. Swords are over, expensive, so I, I'm looking over at just the the, the inscription in the library. What did it? Call, what was it said again? The inscription above the door. Yeah, above the door. Uh, above the door, it says the halls take you where you need to be. The books show you what you need to see. Show me what I need to see. And then I just take a random. I take another random book off of there, and I'm just I clear my mind, and then I try to just sort of like think about the sort of destiny.
And I opened the book. Is anyone else reading along with Jackson? I think Gidget mm -hmm. says and, something and he, like, and he just, and he just sort of also just like does a motion, just like, just like, come here, come here. Uh, I think it just says, oh, I like reading and I'm going to pick up my own book. Yeah, Sam, I'm going to pick up my own book. All right. Let's start. Gidget, what are you thinking about when you pick up a book? I think she tries to think about the whole Draxus situation. Um, but then her mind kind of wanders and she starts thinking about that scene she saw of her mom and dad when she when her mom pulled her dad out of the water because she's still confused what about that situation you open the book and you start reading the people washing up on the shores uh so you read this passage of people washing up on the shores and strange lights just over the water. And you see the same scene that you had a memory of earlier. Of your father washing ashore and your mom putting her coat over top. Oh, we gotta get you in before you catch, catch your death. Uh, and begins to sort of walk with him. You follow. Because before, that's where the memory sort of the, that you had cut off. You follow them down the road. And she brings him and a few others into sort of this communal area. And uh, she's working in a kitchen. Hands them bowls of soup. And a few of them just sit there. They don't quite know what to do. They're vacant expressions almost as though there's a piece of them missing. And your mom goes to uh, goes to another person, uh, a sort of cat-like uh, figure. Um, I, I don't know quite what to do. Some of them, they, they seem like they have their wits about them, but most of them, they seem like there's something, something's off. Like they, they lost something coming across the water. And I don't know, I wish I could get, get it back, but... Sir Nutter Butter, Sir Nutter Butterton, it's, it's well beyond me. Thank you very much, Noir, for that name redemption. Um, this, and this cat folk sort of says... If there's something missing, then maybe there's um, maybe there's some sort of uh, some sort of magic we can use, some sort of restoration, maybe. Uh, seems seems maybe far fetched, but we might be able to handle something like that. Uh, let me do some more reading, and I'll be able to come up with something. And uh, this this cat folk sort of stands, bristles, shakes a little bit. Uh do what you can while you're here though. Just make sure that make sure that they're comfy. And you know, mom sort of nods. Alright. And begins to sort of like tend to uh your father, Reese. Uh just like helping him get from place to place and like feeding like tending to and at a certain point there is a moment where your mom's like that she just talks to him just talks about her day just talks about anything just to sort of he never says anything back past the time and there's a moment where your mom's like it's not like you really even listen to me anyway she's had a bad day she gets frust she's getting frustrated she's like it's not like you even ever really listen to me anyway and she sort of stands and like moves like she's like upset and his hand grasps her wrist wrist and they make eye contact your mom goes can you hear me he nods I 
I'm sorry we don't have much time. The army is coming, and your people need to prepare. And there is... The briefest moment where Reese looks not at your mom, but directly at you and says, close your eyes. And you are snapped back into the library. That was uncanny. There's certainly something weird about the way that people traveled between worlds. People were confused about it. And I do my best to recant what I saw. Who else grabbed a book? Finley? Donnie? Yeah, I did. Donnie does not. All right. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Darby, you're up. Finley. Yeah. Finley, what are you thinking about? Finley's going to take a book that looks friendly physically and then kind of just like over and over and be like, what do I need to see? What do I need to see? What, what, what do I need to see? Kind of like trying not to think of anything specific, just saying that over and over and over again, um, being like, is this how visions work? Mm -hmm. Please. You open the book and you start reading. Finley and Enox, remember the Cyclone team. And as you go, you come to this moment where you're sitting in the bleachers watching a Cyclone ball practice. You see the other members of the team all moving about, doing different exercises. Uh, you see Vo, uh, in particular, like leading the charge on this like certain movement of this practice. Uh, and then you see, and you see yourself taking part in these practices. And you you remember this. This is a this is a particular day of note. Because as you, as you recall what day this is, you see someone trip and you see that their leg goes un out from under them in a very painful way. This person calls, cries out as they fall. Um, everyone else sort of freezes in place, but you, Finley, you watch yourself scoop this person up almost instantly and start running off towards a field nurse. Sun sort of shines in your eye for a second. Blink it, and you're back in the library. Passage reads, Finley and Enox. And Cyclone Bowl practice always jumps to action to help those in need. That's accurate. Did anyone hurt their leg? I don't know what this means. What what did you see? Cyclone ball practice. I helped someone who fell. And I carried them to the nurse. Sorry. Oh, your baby. It's okay. Perhaps. Hey. Perhaps what the book thought you needed most was reassurance. You're natural inclination to help people isn't a bad thing, even if it led to a bad situation in this case. Maybe by, you know, getting him out of basement library time prison, we can like kill him once and for all. I'd also, and I know this sounds like so selfish, I would love to have that sword back. I think, yes. um, 
as Donnie says the thing about like maybe that's what you needed Gidget's face goes all soft but then when Finley says the thing about wanting the sword back she kind of giggles a little bit I just you know I want to do the right things and it's it's really hard to know what the right things are sometimes you yes I agree um best you can do is try your best and sometimes you release an ancient evil onto the world it happens that's fine we'll fix it yeah yeah yes yes we will or die trying because i'm pretty sure i don't think mm, those are the only options we've got let's let's just not do the second part let's pretend okay. we don't have a plan b and just the plan a just put all of our focus toward plan a we're going to put all um, our eggs in that basket. Got it. One of these books probably has the sealing ritual, for example. If we were to open one thinking about how we could put him back. Or put him in a better one? I, I don't know if there is a better one than in the basement of the space between spaces. That that tends to be pretty secure. I right. I, I think just just putting him back would be at think least a good start. Proper signage this time, maybe. Yeah, like a, a if your sword, help. something, or like if you have a sword and it glows near here, please find the nearest exit. That's a bad thing. You know, something. See? And now something. we have an actionable plan. Mm-hmm. I like this. So Feel we can. Now. Yes, we can. Put uh, put action behind words now. We know, we have an idea where we're going. Yes. Paxton, you hear like the talk about the sword and you're still thinking about the sword. You open this book. You think about the sword and you find yourself again on a beach, but a different one this time. Ah. You see that there's children sort of playing off to the side, uh, running into the water and then running out of the water, splashing back and forth. And you look off to the side and you see four figures on the beach. You hear one of them say, well, I got the sword, but I can't keep the sword. I <laughs> But I that I have to find that person has to, and you see, Finley, pointing, at a younger version of Finley on the beach, who is about to dive, run and dive into the water. And you see Finley, at, at Donnie says, "Well, don't just, don't just, don't just stand there. You've got to give her the sword, and get it." We're running out of time here. And Finley just unsheaths the sword and throws it. In a moment of pure panic. And you see the fourth figure turn and look over his shoulder and make eye contact with you. Okay, everybody. And it's you looking at you. Okay, everybody. We've done what we need to do. Now blink. They all close their eyes and they blink out of existence. And you close your eyes. And you're back in the library. <sighs> and that's where we're going to take our first break for the evening. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's a, a good spot for our first break. Uh, we are going to, uh, hello, Raiders from Bright Dystopia. Uh, welcome in. Uh, we're going to get weird. Uh, we are actually going to take our first break for the evening and we will see everybody in about 10 minutes. Uh, so stick around. We'll be back for our second half. Uh, see you in a little bit.
Hello, welcome in. And welcome in, writers from Write Dystopia. It's good to see y'all. And with that, let's dive back in. Paxton, you see this vision you snap back from the book. You good? I think I found out how the sword got in the lake. Mm hmm. Go on. We do it. I don't know how. But, and just like regales everything of just sort of like, of just, of, of just, um, you know, just sort of like us apparently going back to the past to seek younger Finley and then Finley not knowing what to do, yeeting the sword into the lake and then just like blinking, which is a new thing. And then just sort of like, so yeah, um, that's, that happens. That makes it sound like Finley was supposed to let the Draxus out then, right? Because we've lost the sword and now we have to get the sword back. No, oh, I'm the, Raising the swords in the water so that I can find the sword so that I can put the sword back in. I. It, it's, it's, it's weirder than it sounds, but that. I, I, I. I would like to remind you all that my degree is in sociology and I'm quite confused. So I'm going to let you all figure it out. And if you need to talk to somebody, I can do the talking, but. I don't even have a degree yet, and I may not ever get one if we're stuck in this freaking time library. I mean, it's not that useful. I don't really use mine. Mm. That it's degree that you paid thousands of dollars for <laughs> being useless? Couldn't be me. No way. <laughs> Could it be? No, no way. way. Never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely have a I have a, a glowing career in the history field. If you're like that, if you're like thousands of Americans like me, like me, like me, <laughs> exactly. You know, my whole special interest bachelor's degree, very useful. Yeah. All right, then. So, um, right, should we be trying to go back to the water now, then, 
Or do we think that that's... We don't have the sword. We don't have... We have to, yeah. That, we have to get it first. Catherine, it, an important distinction is the Finley that you saw on the shore had the sword and the scabbard, but left the sword behind. So... Okay, so... And, and I don't regret that as well. It's just sort of like... So we also... We, we don't need just the sword. We also need the scabbard as well. That that That's key. Well... Finley, you didn't grab the scabbard out of the water, though, right? You just just mm -mm, had the sword. Just the sword, it, it yeah. Sounds like you just threw the sword. So and then, where's the scabbard? Is it in the water? Because you didn't look for it, and that's where you found the sword. Yeah, I kind of just happened upon it. It was random, and it was kind of stuck. It was like wedged in some rocks, and I was like, "Oh, cool, free sword." Um, I wish there was a magic eight Finley. ball amongst all these books. Meant to wedge itself, like point down in between these rocks, like in the shallows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could have sworn that wasn't there earlier when you went by it. Oh god. So I have always had the sword and have never had the sword. And it's both mine and not mine. Schrodinger's sword. Oh, God. Schrodinger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, uh, as I said, I, I'm going to go over here. And I'm yeah. going to find a comfy chair and sit down. <laughs> Are you grabbing uh, another book? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I can't, I'm not good at this, but sure, I can understand people. Maybe I'll figure something out. Um, and so I'm going to think about the, the people side of this, of if we who trapped Draxos because at some point they must have so we saw him on the battlefield and rip and base and you know cut a guy in half but like at some point he must have fallen because how else would they have done the thing so I'm thinking about who are the heroes of this story okay. that's what I'm thinking about excellent Darby, do you want this one? What, you Darby? It? What's the space you're making? What? I want to put a face. Uh, a book. <laughs> Your eyes are drawn to a book. It's sort of uh, almost tucked away in a corner. Pull it out. Thinking about this. Start reading. Read. You were thinking about who are the heroes of this story who locked Drexus away? Yeah. If it's us, I'm going to be so mad. <laughs> Gidget's uh, going to be mad. Nikki's going to think it's funny, but Gidget will be so mad. You read the passage. Drexus's ritual, ritual begins to take place as Isaac, Iris, and Lens attempt to stop it. And you open your eyes and you're standing in this dark, dank space, pillars, heavy stone flooring, uh, similar to a room that Finley might recognize, minus charring on the floor, uh, or, Yes. Sorry, let's rewind a little bit. Oh, yeah, go for it. Uh, see an altar. I believe. Uh, with Drexo standing behind it. Iris, Lens, Isaac. You the see eyes and lens in the very figure. similar to the one that Donnie saw earlier. I think that's why yes. where the distinction is. Yep, yep, yep. It's the one similar to what Donnie saw earlier. Okay. Me mixy uppy. Not smart. I am. But anyways. 
Keep going. You're doing so good. Keep going. We're doing fine. We're doing fine. <laughs> you see Drex, like arcs of magic ripping off of Drexos as he is like pulling. It's almost like space is bending around his fingers as he is like pulling at something and like air is being pulled away like a fabric like he's grabbing at the fabric reality itself and pulling at it starting at the source a woman laying on the altar pulling pulling the air above her and up and up and up as you see isaac like the statue but smaller like a man of a human size that's a good description but battered as if he's been through battles and battles, all of them, the four people surrounding this altar, fighting for control over this magic as Iris and Lens are trying to pull away at the fabric, pulling it, trying to pull it away from Drexus's hands and Isaac In a moment of what looks like pure desperation, throws himself into the fabric that Drexos is pulling. And there's a big blast. Air blowing over you, causing your eyes to flutter. And you come back to the library. Do I recognize any of the people in the room? The woman on the altar looks like a charcoal sketch that Donnie found in his room. Was Isaac in the room too? Mm -hmm. The only figure you didn't really recognize was an armored figure, red skin, horns. You also recognize Iris and Lens. So I'm assuming that the red skin and horns guy is Draxos? Safe to assume. So then there's Big Boom and I don't see anything after that. Uh, you blinked and returned to the library. Got it. Donnie? Yes, dear. I think they might have sacrificed your friend in your in your ring. She was on some sort of altar. It didn't work. But it didn't work. So sacrifice for nothing. Can you ask her? Say again, Anita. Not for nothing. What do you, I'll, I'll look down at the ring. What makes you say that? What happened after? I was able to be reconstituted for a little bit, but the world was crumbling, and I had to make a choice. There wasn't enough of both worlds to save both worlds. So I stitched them together. The terrors to reality too deep, the battles between Drexos and Isaac. Too damaging. Too unfathomable. So I took what remained and I made a single world between the two. Vertex. We call it. Well, 
but what about you? I exist everywhere and nowhere. It was my love that bound the worlds together. That's why Seems I don't like... exist anymore. Because once I stitched everything together, there wasn't enough of me to remain. But you found a sketch of, of me in the ring, and I didn't know that was there. And now there's hope that I could exist again. People, Not just hope. People will a start plan. to remember. A plan? Plan. Yes. I'll look back up and say, Gidget, darling, uh, yes. would you, would you mind helping, helping me help a friend? Of course. I can help. And I'll look to Paxton and Finley and say, would you both mind helping as well? Of course. Yeah, sure. I need to do, I, yeah, yes. I think this will help me feel better too. Good. Then we have an entire squad of people. Two things on the itinerary, folks. We will be sealing away the ultimate evil and also um, restoring the savior of the world to a full form so she doesn't have to stay in this cramped ring all day oh that sounds easy low-key low stuff her? possibly i'm quite an annoying person to be around so constantly i'm sure i meant we can reunite her with isaac maybe that is makes sense Um, but you're not sure it's possible. I'm... <clears throat> now that I know that the plan was to sacrifice someone, I'm a little more lukewarm on returning this ring to a person that was a part of that plan. Wasn't his fault. Doesn't you mean it wasn't his plan. Made. It's the ring. I heard a quote recently, something about the path to hell and good intentions and such. I'm not saying that he had an abundancy of choices, just I know what I would choose. For sure. I don't think he really realized what kind of position he was in. To make the choice. Let's make sure that I'm never put in the same position then. Deal? Deal. Wonderful. All right. Um, magic books. I haven't particularly wanted to open one, but I probably should. So, oh, right, before we go, opening books. So what do we need to accomplish this? We need a sword, right, that we will apparently give to ourselves. Um, the scabbard is probably also a good thing to track down. Uh, we need a ritual to seal this person. And... We might also want to find out what exactly they were looking for when it comes to this war that they seem to have no qualms about throwing lives at. Yeah, so just like... Okay. So we need ingredients to bake a cake that'll seal away evil and save a person. That is a great way to think of it. That is a massively big cake. 
But the icing on that cake would be you getting your sword back. So that I can throw it into the water. So that you can have it in the first place, yes. I'm not going to think about it anymore because I think I'm, that's probably a good plan. Yeah, yeah. I no, think that, that's a safe. I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm also going to grab another book because I have one little one little question I want to ask. But... Okay. Good question. What's the question? Um, What's your cheeky question? Oh boy. What I'm loving the most about this is watching the the GM's <laughs> facial reactions yep. when people are like, I yep. want to do blank. And then yeah. Darby having zero poker face. Um, <laughs> I have nothing. I got nothing. All improv, baby. Sure. Anyhow, so I remember, I think while Finley's trying to forget the whole, like trying to figure out, like, so I throw the sword in the water to have the sword, to not have the sword, to have the sword, like trying to not, to get out of that loop of brain hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, she, I think she remembers the first time she interacted with Draxos and he had said something along the lines of helping, helping her understand or know something or giving her information or something along those lines. Um, I believe like he had promised her find, something. Find your teacher and he'll help guide you. Mm-hmm. And what that all means so she kind of wants to be like, was that important? It has to be, right? I mean, he was trying to incentivize me to do this, but like, what, what was he talking about? And so it's kind of grabbing a different book to do that. Okay. Because I don't think she understands how the book thing works, where it's like, can I just use the same one? Is that going to be a different one? So she just grabbed a different one. Finley Enox finds the professor. You open the book, and do you see you standing next to the professor? And oh yes, Miss Enox, please come have a look at this. And he grabs a page from the book, rips it out, crumples it up. Watch. He releases it. The page uncrumples from his hand and flips back down to the book, reforming on the page. This place is full of wonders and marvels. It's, it's all so fascinating. And I think that you might be able to help me with something. There was a, a, a bit of a problem, you see, and I think you might just be the person, just be the person to help me with this. And he begins to guide Finley down the hallways. You sort of see, mm-hmm. looking over the professor's shoulder, you see that same sort of outlined figure, that accretion disc shape of a human, guiding the professor, similarly to how the professor guided you. All the answers you seek, professor, are this way, down the halls. Down, down the halls? Take her below. You all see this from the professor's perspective. And you realize that you, Finley, didn't hear anything when you were walking with the professor. They round a corner. And it breaks your eyeline for a second and you blink and you find yourself outside the book. The professor, fooled by Drexos, to bringing the Sword of Destiny to his hands once more. It's not my fault. Freaking knew it. That's what I said. Although, kind of my fault. Okay. Okay, so he was lying, but when he said he could tell me stuff. Okay. But I did follow the professor to... I don't think guy's a jerk. Finley, eager to help, follow the professor. Mm-hmm. 
It's just rude taking advantage of someone like that. Upsetting, really. It's upsetting. This guy really is a meanie. We should but do something about it. You, though. He did say thank you. Once again, manners do go a long way. But that's not an excuse for manipulating people. Uh, Into setting you free from your time prison. Space prison? But we I'm sorry, space prison. Donnie, which book are you grabbing? What are you thinking about? So here's the thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I really should be thinking about, like, the sheath is probably where Donnie would start. But I think in all honesty, Donnie would probably be thinking about the picture being drawn. Like when when that charcoal sketch was made is probably what Donnie's actually thinking about. Darn. Pick up a book. Open the page. And you read. On the eve of the mission, Isaac and Emily sit quietly in their tent. You close your eyes and you open them. You are in, start standing in a, in a corner, in a closet almost, shrouded a little bit by objects. As you see, sort of quietly in this tent, Amelie is sitting, reading, reading something. She's leaning back in a chair pausing over pages, flipping them over, writing a note here or there, and look over to the left, and you see the figure that you had saw as a statue, Isaac, at a desk, like a table in the middle of the room, sitting there, looking up, looking down, charcoal in hand, sketching Amelie in profile. She's reading. quiet moment between these two. For Isaac stands up, folding this picture that he's drawn of Amelie, smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Pulls out a ring. A very, very familiar ring to you. Pops it open, puts the piece of paper inside, and then goes and sits next to Amelie, resting his head on her shoulder as she reads, and she adjusts slightly. I know you worry too much. No one's been over there in thousands of years. I don't feel like it's wrong to be worried. No, no one's been back in thousands of years. Semantics. <sighs> and you call me the warrior, but look, you're looking over mission briefs, you're going over old papers so it's really the worry ward here I just want to make sure that i'm prepared it's not worry it's an abundance of caution mm -hmm. besides bear with me what can go wrong as long as we're together All right. Are you ready? Because we set out now. Honestly, they said they said dawn, but they also said whenever we're ready. 
I don't know that I'm ever going to be ready. Therefore, you're always ready. Time's funny like that. She cricks her neck. As it stands, offers a hand. She takes it and helps her to her feet. Nice. Let's go. Into the, the great beyond. beyond. Now. <laughs> they. And they walk out to the tent. You follow them, or do you like? I follow him. You watch them as they begin to step out into this area that looks almost like a misty forest. Not the water that you remember people mentioning that was crossing over. You watch as they step out, follow them through this mist. So they step out onto from a forest into what looks like desert. They turn around, the forest is gone. Well, I think that's the sign we needed. Still in one piece. One more piece. So, overly cautious. Where did your maps and plans tell us we should go to first? I think it was their hands that grab Amelie and pull her backwards. You see, Isaac reach for Amelie, just missing her. And the moment that Amelie is gone from vision, he blinks. Shakes his head. <sighs> well, sent here on my own. Where to first? And he starts walking. Alone. It's still on his hand. What is Amelie feeling in the ring right now? Found sadness. Grief. You made him forget me. Who do you think took me? I'm sorry. Uh, this. I'm sure this must be a personal memory. I don't. I don't know why I was thinking about this. The lot. The books show you what you need to see. You needed to see it. If you didn't need to see it, you won't have. This this will be fixed, Amelie. I promise you that. Yep. 
first person to promise that. Good. Last. That just means I have allies. Well, are you going to blink? Oh, oh, is that how I get out of here? Yes, I will do make the most like non autonomous blink like I have ever taken of like, ah, you open your eyes and you are back at the library. Shit, that is so weird. I didn't like that at all. That was... If I had blinked earlier, would it have... I'm not worrying about it. Um, And Donnie, in a similar vein to Finley, Donnie will also get another book. Just because in his head, he's like, well, yeah, I need, I need to know a different thing. So it's got to be a different book. Because that's just what makes sense to him. Mm -hmm. But, um... Yeah, I'll, I'll grab a couple of books off the shelves and continue. Now I'll be looking for things we actually need to look for. <laughs> Paxton, what are you doing while all this is going down? He's just he he's just unsure because he's just uh, a lot of a lot of mental note making on on the parent just like time not not even a time heist but just sort of like good lord where 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 are we gonna go from here and just. Now he's just, he's on the corner of just like, do I introspect or do I just try to find more about what do we do? And now he's just sort of like... As you're sort of wandering throughout these stacks and shelves, you turn a corner and you find a seating area and you see there is a figure sitting there just having a rest, looking like he's completely out of breath. He walks over to them. You say, unfamiliar furs and armor. Ah. Just sort of speaks up, just sort of like, ah. So glad of you to join, to join me, or join us, actually. I've just got a second catching my breath. You see that he's bleeding. Oh, sh He just, like, goes over, just like, just like tries to see just like where the wound is just like it happened ah uh, i got found lost a battle draxos i'm assuming yeah yeah and i can't fight two of him across all time and space so he got me it's okay i'm just just need a sec Okay, um, so I know you said, and I, 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 Jesus, um, so we have a plan, we're figuring it out, we're gonna reseal him in, oh god, I don't know if I'm getting this right, we're gonna, either way, we're gonna reseal him, go back in time, throw the thing, thing away that sealed him, and then come back, fix everything, get you reunited with your wife, and Amelie? hopefully that fixes every hmm? Amelie? Yeah. That's that's her name. Oh, she's not my wife, but um never mind. Reseal but... everything? That seems like a pretty Just... vague plan. Not exactly it... <laughs> filling me with confidence here. We're working on pretty vague things as well. I mean, I just this whole thing is just vague enough as it is and we're just four people who were thrust into greatness and yeah that's I, I i i know making it up as i go doesn't exactly inspire the most confidence but quite frankly no, that's actually, the best I, weapon we've got i, I, at I this respect point. improvisation honestly oh are, are i are you good are, can i he i don't know if i book. have anything and you see him blink, and in his hands, there's a bottle. He, one, puts it in his mouth, uncorks it, spits out the cork, chugs it down, and you can see the wound heal itself. You just grabbed it from the book. Mm hmm? It, uh, um, so you can answer, so you can, 
you could interact with that. Wait, where, where you went? You just grabbed that? Yeah. And it didn't... I mean, I... Because that, because that could solve a lot. The alchemist made a batch of potions. One of them went missing. He must have misplaced it. Okay. Uh, and... I'm drawing blanks. What does this have to do with us? I mean, unless you use it. Nothing. And he scans. All right. You'll figure this out. I'm sure you will. You've got all the pieces you need. But And I do, while I do appreciate improvisation, Amelie is part of the equation. Sure. Resealing Drexos? Great idea. Like I said, can't really fight two of them. <sighs> Fighting one is bad enough across all time and space. Um, there's also one big important thing that you're missing, though. What's that? You broke a tower. He rounds a corner, and as you sort of try and follow him, he's gone. Oh, shit. He's getting... Paxton's gonna grab an... Paxton's gonna grab a book. Okay. And he's Paxton going to... Thinking about? He's thinking about... When everyone first arrived to the tower. And everyone's futzing about in the clock room. Because if this thing can take... Because he's got a theory. And quite frankly... I've got a theory. I got... He's got a theory. And quite frankly, if this works... And with what Isaac did... Could, did is just sort of like... Working, then screw it. Open the book. And he's just, 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 just sort of like thinking back to that moment of just like everyone going there and just sort of like just like turning page, closing his eyes, just like take me back. So page turn, take me back. Page turn, take me back. Page turn. You. So you're thinking about the moment that you three went to the tower. Yes. Interesting. You read, flipping through these pages, you open your eyes, and you catch the line at the time of the tower's construction, you look up. You see the tower not in pieces, not complete, but just beginning. The people constructing it, laying bricks down. And you see inside, as these walls are being built up, you see a magic circle being inscribed on the inside of it. People scratching a rune here, racing it, writing a new rune, going over there, doing the same thing. Before they place a hand down, magic energy surging, and the tower begins to fully construct itself. These people look strange to you. Not like anyone you've ever encountered before. They have dark, almost midnight blue skin with flecks that look like stars shining just below the surface. And then he's going to do something which is probably going to be stupid to him, but at this point, he's out of options. Patton's going to speak up. Excuse me. Hi. Greater time beings. 
One of them um, and looks at you. I mean, no harm or ill will or anything. Um, my name is Paxton. Paxton Willamette. Willamette. Yes. Um, I come from another time, a, a, another dimension. This. You don't we need did so, to I, explain. We know you. We've always known you. Then you know what happens to. Then you know what happens here. To this. Points over to the tower. The tower falls. The tower yes. was raised. And the tower will fall. It happens. It has always happened. How do we. Is there, is there a way to just sort of like. Can we reinforce it? Can we, can we just stop it from happening? Or is it just destined to happen? Destined. Hmm. One of them sort of points at the runes on the ground. The tower rises. He walks, up. He walks over to inspect the runes. Unlike anything you've ever seen before, and they glow as this tower begins to sort of construct itself, rising up and up to the heavens. The tower will rise again. The tower will fall again. The tower has one fallen. Them, one of them scratches out a rune, draws in a new one. The tower begins to unmake and collapse. Scratches it out, writes in the rune, continues to build. Your friend thought he broke the tower. It wasn't his fault. These plans were laid in motion long before anything. Then you know how this all ends, don't you? We do. We can't do anything to prevent it or stop it. We don't interfere. Yeah, of course. Do we make it out alive at least? Oh, that's skipping to the end. <sighs> you have everything you need, Paxton Willamette. You just need <laughs> to believe. That's the most important part. He just sort of looks up at the tower and just like at the sigils and all of them and it's just <laughs> I'm sorry it's just oh god I don't know how long I've even been here hours seem like minutes months feel like days everything's just going around my head and it's just oh god you are... I wasn't meant for this kind of good stuff. Mm. You know, I mean, just saving the world. That's my that's my sort of, that was going to be my brother's thing. And then my sister's thing. But now here I am. Last son to be dad's biggest regret. Or his proudest moment, and here I am, smack dab in the hole of the space-time continuum, trying to either fix this damn thing or damn us all. And 
I don't have a clue of how to do it. And you know, why me? You know, it's just what, what I, I was content with just, you know, being a teacher's aide, being, being someone who would just. As you're talking through this. He doesn't understand. No. Uh, understand what? It's okay. Not knowing things is the first step to learning something. Admitting you don't know something. That's important. So many people go through life so sure of everything that they believe in, but being completely wrong about all of it. They're not even the slightest bit curious. They think they know it all. That's, I think, what's important about you, Paxton. You don't know why and you want to know why. Hold on to that. It wasn't your brother's job, or your sister's job. It might seem cruel and uncaring. But the universe set you on this path. You on this path. Not your siblings. Not your forebears. You can be nev you can never be anything except yourself. You are nobody's regrets. Nobody's proudest moment. You are you. Your existence is itself. A whole sentence. So ask the questions, Paxton, Willamette. It's, uh... <clears throat> Gallery. My name's... My... Well, I met my mom's maiden name before she died. Gallery's my real last name. And, uh, you know, I just, you know, all this time I was just trying to play this facade of just, you know, just some, some regular guy who just wanted to be a teacher's aide and then kept fumbling across, you know, I kept trying to make myself into a different person. And then it's just, the more I tried to fake it, the more I just sort of kept coming into me, becoming more of me. I, I you are who you All I know is, is that to be. All I know is that after all this is over, one, I'm probably going to need therapy. <laughs> he just like lets out a sort of genuine laugh. And two, actually take, pun intended, more time to just figure myself out. That is important. You are who you choose to be. Hillary, Willamette, you are Paxton. You are you. So ask the questions. What do you need? I need to know how me and my friends 
can fix this mess that we got ourselves into. Wrongs, right some, right some wrongs, and get us back home safe. And I know you are merely observers, but I ask you humbly and with as much grace as I can give to at least guide us along the way. What do you think? Little push wouldn't hurt. I already have. Your friend already has the right plan. Pieces. It's important to keep in mind that you will be coming to a decision that we know the answer to. But it will be a hard decision in the end. Two very divergent paths. Not without a sacrifice. A definite split. The seams of your reality are tenuous. And you must decide whether redoing the stitches or setting them apart will be the path to take. What if there's a third way? If you can find it. Yeah, of course. Of course if you can it. find it, then find the third way. But know that of the two paths, one way you lose, either way you lose something. One's an opportunity, the other a friend. Change is not a bad thing. You just have to be ready for it. Change will happen, as it always does, and you can either Accept it as it goes, or rail at it as it continues to go. But if you can find a third way, well, that, that's something not even we have seen. That would be something that only you could do. Axon sort of looks over at the two beings and then looks back at the book and with pretty much cosmic reassurance given to him, he just looks back at them and just goes is Will I get to see you two again? 
Probably if this really not. is all destined, if everything that we're doing is on this concurrent path, divergence and whatnot, how are you so sure of us? How are you not? Because, uh, uh, I'm no hero. <laughs> then blink and be done with it. He just sort of like is unsure of it, but just sort of like blinks. We're back in the library. The beings from the time before time gave advice to an old friend. And the answer to rebuild the tower. On the other page you see the glyphs that they were drawing. Paxton just Paxton just sort of, just immediately just like flabbergasted, but just like runs back to just the group, just sort of like, just sort of, just sort of like, guys, guys. I think the tower, it's, it's always meant to fall. It's always meant to be, it's always meant to be put back. If we broke it, we can rebuild it. And he just sort of shows them the glyphs to everyone and just sort of like, and this is how we're going to do it. I don't know if that was a good cliffhanger end part. I don't That's, know, but just... Actually, I don't think that there is a better place for us to end this session than on that note. Uh, that has been our episode of Time and Time Again. Thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, we are going to do our outros, uh, and uh, everybody's going to tell us who they are, where they can be found, and what they are doing. And we are going to start, we're going to start in reverse order with uh, our, our lovely Finley, played by May. Hi, awesome. Hi, I have been May this whole time, and probably going forward in the future as well. Um, you can find me on Twitter at maybe mayhem. Um, I'm working on a, a potentially another project. We'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, you can mostly find me on Twitter. I'll be posting about any updates there. Um, and that's kind of all I got going right now besides my day job, which is a little bit boring. Um, should I pass it on to someone else or would you like to assign? Uh, let's go. Volunteer someone. I'll volunteer okay. text. Oh, hi everybody. Um, I play. I, I thank you for joining me on on uh, yet another crazy wild ride. It is um Paxton's uh Paxton self assurance roller coaster. <laughs> this was definitely something. Uh, if you liked more of that, um, you could follow me over at on Twitter at the Chase Beck, where I am not as socially anxious as as I was was playing today. Um, and if you liked more of my role playing style, uh, you can find me uh, this Wednesday uh, because my Star Wars Five E D and D group is coming back on Twitch. That is Revenge of the Crit. I will be playing the role of uh, RC O nine four seven, aka Viper, in our Clone Wars uh, based uh, Star Wars D and D D at around nine PM EST. That is Revenge of the Crit on Twitch. And can I snowball it, or do you want, or do you? Or... Uh, well, go to we'll go to Nikki. I'll just push yeah. it over. Hey! Of overlay. I am Nikki, and I use she, her pronouns. I um, am wrapping up my time as producer at TEATRPG. Our last big hurrah is our Fay Fair fundraiser, where we um, are raising funds for Trans Lifeline and to celebrate uh, my birthday a week early because of Gen Con. Um, but... Uh, Please tune in for that. It's Friday, uh, the last weekend of this month, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We have panels and games. When that is done and TTRPG shuts down, I will be back here at Critical Misses as creative director. You can follow me everywhere as Halfling Nikki. 
Heck yeah. And last but not least, uh, Donnie Powers, played by Dee. Oh, hello, that is me. Good evening, <laughs> my lovely children of the dark. My name is Dee. I am a voice actor, streamer, musician, professional GM, all over the interwebs. And, uh, yeah, I do a lot of things. I am your reigning international, intercontinental, TTRPG universal champion. And I am also the keeper of the unwinding clock. Thank you for joining us and follow me on Twitter before it burns down at It's Dridler. <laughs> uh, and Darby, who, you, who be you? Oh, hi. Hello. My name is Darby, otherwise known as Chaotic Darby on the internet. Uh, you can find me under the handle, uh, almost anywhere a handle is to be held, including in the big deep doop blue blue blue. blue. Oh my god, words are hard. The big blue <laughs> sky above. Uh, even though I'll still be riding the bird until it eventually collapses underneath the weight of itself. Um, I'm a TTRPG performer, streamer, possum, and all around uh, menace on the web. Um, places you can find me. Uh, there is a bundle that just went up called a uh, pocket, pocket, pocket RPGs uh, bundle on itch. One of the games that I designed is on there. It's called Gas Leaks about hiding your farts in public. Uh, besides that, you can also find me on For the Last Hurrah of TTRPG, mostly in the background doing background stuff, but on the, uh, on one of the shows, as well as the TTRPG talk show, uh, and besides that, I'll also be back here on Critical Misses, not only running this game, but also as head of community development, so I'll be doing stuff and things on the channel that I first, I first emerged from two years ago, two, three years, two, a number of years ago that is more than I would like, uh, to be here and do work as on the administrative side, but, uh, yeah, I think. That, that leaves me, I guess. Oh shit! Uh, before you, have, you, have, you gotta promote. What you gotta promote? What's going on? One more. On? Where are you uh, gonna be? Neon lights on Neon lights role play. I'm in a game called Stardust Ghosts, and I totally didn't forget that until I remembered we had a raid from them. Uh, I am in a game called Neon Light on called Stardust Ghosts on Neon lights role play. There should be an episode coming out this Wednesday where I'm playing Roxanne, who's definitely not a murderer. And on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. PST, you can catch me on Thorny Dryad's channel playing a Star Trek Adventures game that I'm very excited about. I play Trill. Audrid, she is very positive. Anyways, now I'm done. <laughs> now it's me. Hello, everybody. I'm Anita, otherwise known as Panita, Critical Misses. I'm going to do this real fast, so hold on to your butts. I'm TTRPG streamer, graphic designer, producer, and cat mom about the space. You can find me here on Mondays, GMing this lovely game with my co-GM over there. Uh, and on Wednesdays and Fridays, you can find me behind the scenes producing our two wonderful shows. Saturdays, you can find me here for Morning Ritual, which is our TTRPG talk show. And our guest this week is Omar, Omar Najam, uh, who was on... Uh, uh, on Dimension 20 and a bunch of other things, Critical Role. Uh, so yeah, we're very excited to talk to Omar this week. Uh, and on Sundays, you can find me over on Indoor Adventures for a Apocalypse Keys game. And on Tuesdays, you can find me over on Modifius' channel for a Star Trek Adventures game. Uh, that's it. That's all. That's me. Uh, and I am going to take us out on a raid. Uh, we are going to head over, I think, to Total Party Chill. Uh, I believe they're playing some Wander Home, so let's send some love over that direction. Uh, thank you all so much for stopping by and hanging out with us, and we will see you next time and time again. Bye, everybody!